Welcome to The Pulse. I'm your host, Leah Garcia, the way better looking host than Peter Biancamano. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. And today I'm here at Impostos Pizza and Deli, joined by the lovely Krista Stucchio. Follow her on IG at Krista.Stucchio. My new handle. Yes. My, new, my name changed since the last time I was on Peter Bay. <laughs> <laughs> and today, Krista, tell us a little bit about what we'll be doing. We're going to be eating a lot of things uh, from Impasto's Pizza. And it's not just pizza. We've got some other goodies here. So do you want me to just dive in? Should oh, we, yes, Should we get in the first item? Okay, so this was actually my special request. Um, this first one is a vodka chicken parm oh, pizza sandwich. So you can grab one. I'll grab one. Oh, I'm definitely I, grabbing one. I am a can huge fan something? of chicken parm. I love to replace my sauce with vodka sauce. I'm just a big vodka sauce girl. Okay. And it looks like we've got some fresh ricotta on here. Ooh. So cheers. Let's cheers. go in. Let's go. Boom. Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna talk right now. Mm -mm. We gotta let this process <laughs> first because it is so good. It tastes like Vodka chicken parm, two slices of pizza. I mean, it's exactly what mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's like if you want a sandwich, but you also want pizza at the same time. Mm -hmm. And you want chicken parm. All three of them combined in one. Right. And you know, I have a really hard time making decisions when I go out to eat. So this is perfect. Super perfect. Oh, look at this. I feel like I feel like the rat and ratatouille right now when he's trying <laughs> like the cheese and the grape, mm -hmm. I think. It's just an explosiveness of flavors. It's yeah. so good. Yeah. Now, when you usually rate dishes like this, so you said you're a vodka sauce girly. What yeah. else goes into it? Is it um, the cheese? Is it I mean for this, yeah, I love I love when a cold cheese is combined with a hot dish. Mm. So I love that combo. And this crust is super crispy. So I mean, I'm going to give this a five out of five. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to agree with you. I mean, it's it's great. It's everything that I would expect from it. Yeah. And, you know, you're the expert here and <laughs> can't go wrong with the expert taste buds. I say it's amazing. Come try this. Yes. Definitely. All right, we're going to move on, though. And I'm a little afraid of this. I'm going to probably tuck in a little napkin into my dress here. I've I got know. a pile on my lap, too. <laughs> I know my family's watching this right now. Like, why did she wear that to this segment? Because they know me. I spill everything. <laughs> So we've got some fried ravioli, which I feel like is a classic favorite among so many people. Um, we'll see if this explodes all over the place, but I'm going to dunk this in some marinara sauce Ooh. and give it a bite. You got to zoom in on that bite. That was a great oh my God. bite right there. Wow. I'm going to do the same it's because like, it just looks so good. It puffs up a little bit. Got a little puff in there. I love it. It's fun to eat. <laughs> mm. Great spin on a ravioli. Mm -hmm. Not too heavy. Mm. Not super greasy, which I feel like I worry about often mm -hmm. um, when it comes to fried food. This is great. Right. What do you think? I mean, I think it's great as well. I feel like going off of what you said about it's super light i yeah. feel like i can eat this wear this and not have to worry mm -hmm. not too greasy nope so i'm really loving it what do you rate it now the big question i would rate it i'm gonna give it a four out of five we a tough critic on this one <laughs> only because i'm a cheese girl and i want to have more cheese in there okay a little bit more cheese that's right. it i'm going to give it a five out of five because <laughs> i am a big back athlete who loves to eat so <laughs> Everything is just super yummy, and this hasn't disappointed. All right. I love it. Raviolis, guys. Great option. I've never had them here. All right. Moving on. We've got some Ooh. egg rolls. Buffalo chicken. And I think this is cheesesteak. And we've got some ranch dipping sauce and Thai chili, which I wouldn't expect to dunk either of these in Thai chili, right. but I'm going to try the... The cheesesteak. I there. will try. What's this one again? This is buffalo chicken. I'm trying that with. It this looks like sauce. there's some carrot in there too. Yeah, which I love. Healthy. Throw some veggie in there. Right. All right. So I'm gonna dunk in there. Okay. I will do the opposite. All right. Let's try this. Let's go. Is it spicy? Mm-mm. Okay. No. Is yours That's spicy? That's good to know. No. 
That sauce is delicious. I got the sauce first because I put a lot mm -hmm. on there. But it's a great combo. Right. I would normally think of like dunking in some sauce or some cheese, but that's actually a really, really good combo. The sweet and tangy with the rich cheese and meat works well. So would you say you're more of a sweet and tangy girl, a savory, I am salty. savory all the way. Okay. But I love like a sweet and savory combination. Okay. So I'm into it. I'm into that. I'm going to give the uh, buffalo chicken a try too. All right. Let me try the posing one. Peter knows this. I'm a big sauce girl, so. <laughs> Gotta try all the sauces. Oh my God. That's perfect for me because it's not too spicy. Mm. I can't handle spice mm. too well. Me neither. So that's a great balance. And again, sometimes egg rolls can be like pretty soggy and greasy. Cooked to perfection. Super good. Five out of five. Five out of five. Five I'm out of five. With that because I'm not a typically a sauce girly. Okay. But this sauce is really, really it's good. It's really good. Really yeah, good. It's unexpected. Super unconventional, I feel. Like you'd expect a lot of spice out of it. Yeah. But it really hits the spot. Yeah. It's great. Nice so and refreshing. Good. All right, we're moving on to the star over here, this big boy. We got a pepperoni pizza, but it's <laughs> uh, it's a little spicy. It's a hot honey pepperoni pizza. Ooh. And um, I've said this before, but that's when you know it's good pepperoni. When it's a nice cup, it holds the oil, curls up like that. So, I'm saying. I mean, look at this. I don't even know. They All the slices look perfect, but I'm just going to grab what's closest to me. Yeah, that's definitely a tip for myself. I'm not a big pepperoni girl, but I know if the pepperonis are crisp and yep. like not floppy, oh, yeah. it's a good pepperoni slice. So you said it was it's a honey? Good, a honey what? Hot honey. Hot, Hot honey. honey pepperoni. Woo! So expect a little sweetness. A little kick. But a little kick, yep. I don't have anywhere to put this. Oh yeah. It's good. Just classic. Mm -hmm. And I just love hot honey. Sometimes you just need that little extra something, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And it's not too much. You don't want to overdo it. Mm. <laughs> My second bite says enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to really look, look at this crispy roni. Like, it's perfect. Oh yeah. So would you say this beats out the conventional pepperoni pizza slice? I would say so. Okay. It's funny because a lot of people love a pepperoni slice, and I don't mind it at all, but I love more toppings. So combining pepperoni with, like, some fresh ricotta on top or some peppers or hot honey, I'm into it. Mm -hmm. I just like to jazz up everything. I like to load up my sandwiches. I'm all about just give me some extra stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm the girl getting guac. Ooh. I know guac is extra, but it's better. <laughs> You know? <laughs> right. So do you get the guac with everything in it? You know? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not just regular guac. You know, you oh, get no, the you cilantro. Gotta, everything you get goes the... in there. Oh, Perfect. yeah. I love all, all the right. works. All the works. Extra panache over there. Um, I'm going to say five out of five for the pizza, too. I know. I mean, there's really, you can't go wrong. The crust is perfect. The cheese is nice and secure. Nothing's falling off. Pepperonis are nice and crispy. Can't ask for more. Listen, I'm on my third bite, so obviously it's a five <laughs> out of five. <laughs> Might Keep finish it going. the whole thing. Definitely going to devour this pie afterwards. Yeah, so. we got a lot left, so. Super, super good. But, <laughs> I mean, what would you rate impostos overall, given all the dishes that we just tried? Oh, my gosh. Uh, out of five? I'm five out of five. And I love <laughs> these guys. The, the guys who run impostos are amazing. They're so friendly. And uh, every time I'm here, I have a great experience. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Krista, for joining us. Guys, remember to go and follow her on Instagram. Keep <laughs> up with what she's doing at Krista.Stukio. And thank you so much for joining The Pulse. We'll be right back. Peter Biancomano, your hostess with the mostest of The Pulse with Peter B. Folks, don't forget to go on our Facebook and our Instagram pages by searching The Pulse with Peter B. And like and follow us on each of those platforms. We're constantly updating those pages with previews of each week's segments and cool stories. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our email address at thepulsewithpeterb at gmail.com. Welcome back. I'm your host with the most, Josh Sotomayor Einstein, and I am here without that bum, Bianca Mano, and with a very special guest, Councilman Phil Cohen. How are you doing? I'm good, Josh. It's good to be with you. 
Thanks so much for, for joining us. Uh, I know we don't agree on many things, but I'm always happy to hear your, your valued opinion. I mean, I don't know if everyone values it, but I value it. I'll take it. Uh, and <laughs> he'll take it. <laughs> uh, so I just want to know from your perspective, what's been going on in town? I know we had a congressional election that just happened. Um, I know, as always, I smell marijuana in the air, um, and I'm sure there's other stuff going on. So why don't you tell everyone there in TV land what's going on? Sure. Well, we did have a big congressional election, Josh. You know, in Hoboken, typically others decide who is going to be our congressman. Usually they're powers that be in the county or in uh, smoke-filled rooms, and we get to vote on that person. This time we actually had a competitive election. Uh, you had a great debate here, uh, Peter and you, uh, uh, Pulse of Peter B, have lots of viewers uh, between our current Congressman Menendez and our Mayor Ravi Bala, uh, people who the people in the Mile Square City know very well. Uh, and it was a very hotly contested race, lots of mailers, lots of uh, purchased media. And uh, it was, uh, I had endorsed Mayor Bala in that election. Uh, a number of council people endorsed Congressman Menendez. Uh, in fact, people from the, the co council colleagues in the first, second, and third wards uh, all supported Congressman Menendez. Uh, Mayor Bala wound up winning all six wards. He won Hoboken with 60% of the vote. He won the fifth ward, uh, where I represent, with over 66% of the vote. Uh, it was a very strong showing for the mayor here in Hoboken and also in Jersey City. But clearly there is life yet in the Hudson County machine. Uh, and uh, Brian Stack in particular did an awesome job getting out the vote. And uh, Congressman Menendez is going to continue to serve Hoboken, and I'm sure he's going to continue to serve Hoboken well. Well, I mean, we'll see if he beats his Republican challenger. <laughs> I don't know, Josh, if you're a betting man, but uh, I'll take the action on that one. I will not take the action <laughs> because I am not a betting man, and I am also at least a little bit smart. So, no, everybody knows that the real election that was the was the Democratic primary. Yep. Uh, and I will say that uh, as much as I'm not necessarily surprised that, uh, you know, Menendez won, uh, you know, re, re the nomination again from the Democrats, uh, I am very impressed uh, in two things from, from, from Mayor Bala. One, his messaging, you know, for the Democratic primary for the voters of, of the district was spot on. Uh, and he, you could see that he really put in the work and put in the effort. Uh, and so I think, you know, in terms of an inaugural run for, for even higher office for mayor, I think he knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Um, and then also in terms of Hoboken, I mean, you know, I, I think he showed people that might want to run against him for mayor uh, that uh, he has the biggest yeah. swinging schmeckle. Let's put it that <laughs> way. I actually forgot to mention the fourth ward council person also endorsed Congressman Menendez and the mayor obviously was successful in the fourth ward as well. So, uh, listen, people know the mayor. He ran un unopposed for re-election. If you had told me that was possible in such a hotly divided political climate, I would say that's not possible. Uh, so I think people in Hoboken saw, I, it was interesting. I was out with the mayor the Thursday morning before the election saying hi to people at the ferry line and a number of Republicans, good Republicans, good people, uh, thanked the mayor for running. Uh, and told them that they'd actually made a contribution to his campaign. So I think he does have an appeal with not just the Democratic Party that uh, came out strong for him, but I think the Republicans as well. Uh, they may not have switched over to become Democrats for this primary election, but I think that they appreciated him taking on the fight that he did, and he fought hard, and uh, you know he didn't get the result that he wanted. But I do think that, at least in our community, he's been elevated even more than he was before the election. Now, I know... Something that uh, that you had said you wanted to talk about, and I definitely want to talk about. We talked about a lot on this show, the potential for a referendum on rent control and, and a vacancy decontrol change happening in Hoboken. Yeah. So why don't you update people from well, your Well, back in April, someone came up to me on 10th Street in Washington with a petition to sign, and they asked me if I would be willing to sign a petition for affordable housing in Hoboken. I knew what this referendum was for, and frankly, Josh, I was offended by the question because it is, uh, to call it spin is generous. Uh, this is a referendum to see if uh, people who own properties in Hoboken can pay $2,500 to get exempt from rent control protections, to basically be able to charge market rent for a one-time payment of $2,500. Uh, 
uh, the $2,500 would go towards an account for affordable housing, but Josh, you know what it costs to build housing in Hoboken, and $2,500, uh, even if you've got 1,000 units, you're talking about $2.5 million, losing 1,000 affordable below market rent in exchange to create $2.5 million of, into a fund for affordable housing doesn't add up. If you're in favor of vacancy decontrol, which is what this is for, sure, we can have that conversation, whether that's a good idea or not. But to sell it as affordable housing is really not right. So the clerk recently announced that uh, Mr. Simon Sini, one of your guests- And a who, good friend. Uh, who has been on this show, uh, was unable to fool enough people to sign this petition. They came up about uh, 100 signatures short. Uh, I understand there's someone sitting in uh, Columbus Park who's trying to collect signatures the exact same way they approached me. Would you sign a petition for affordable housing in Hoboken? Uh, I think it's deceptive. I think it's wrong. A number of people reached out to me. I introduced a resolution in front of the city council condemning those practices. So if you want to have a discussion about rent control, that's fine. But to sell it as promoting affordable housing is deceptive. It's not accurate. I think Mr. Simoncini should know better. And if they want to have that discussion, we should have an adult discussion about that. People in Hoboken are smart. They don't appreciate being tricked. And we'll see what happens. They may get the additional 100 signatures, but there may be consequences after that. So we'll find out. Well, it, it, real quick, it's very interesting because you know I'm friends with you. I'm friends with, with Cheryl from, from the Fair Housing Association. And I'm friends with Ron. Uh, and it, I think maybe sometime in the future, it'd be great to, to have all three, everybody together, just to, to have a, not, not a debate, but a moderated discussion sort of on, on everyone's perspective on where we go forward in, in, right. as a town. Right, and I listened to Ron's interview with you and he makes a lot of decent, legit points, a lot of which you agreed with. But I don't think anyone agrees that it's a good idea to get people to put something on the ballot for a vote based on false pretenses. Have an honest discussion about what you're trying to accomplish in terms of vacancy decontrol and then ask the voters of Hoboken whether they want that or not. That's fair. Telling people sign here for affordable housing is deceptive, it's wrong, it shouldn't happen. So we have about a minute and 10 seconds left. Uh, I know it's a pet peeve of mine. I was fetching and moaning to you about it before we were filming that the marijuana is in the air 24 seven. And folks, I used to smoke. I used to be a pothead for three years, so I'm not against it. I just hate having red eye all the time. Uh, so that brings us to, there actually is a dispensary on my block, and I know uh, they've been going through a lot. Maybe you could update everybody on that. Yeah, it's a young couple. They put their life savings into this business. They've been fighting against uh, people who are committed to putting them out of business, suing them in court, forcing them to spend their money to just have a business that they were approved to have by the city council, by the zoning board, by the planning board. Uh, so I feel for them. Uh, the word of the day is edibles. They don't smell, they don't give you red eye. I think edibles are the way for folks to go. Uh, the station is also open by the PATH station. They are not subject to litigation, but uh, you know, so I'm, I'm hopeful for these folks to get going. I hope for your neighbors to use edibles so you don't have to have those red eyes. Uh, but the fact is, Josh, 2% uh, of every sale goes to the, to the uh, coffers of the city of Hoboken. People are using cannabis, it's legal. It's been, it was used before it was legal. Oh, it's yeah. being used now that it is legal. Uh, and th it will help offset tax increases, something that I know you care about a lot. We should have those monies being spent here in Hoboken, going to our taxpayer funds and offsetting future tax increases, something that we all care about. Well, Councilman, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I hope you'll come on again in the future. Happy to join you, Josh. And I hear you're going to take some time off for the summer, which sounds really good. A little bit. Stay <laughs> tuned. We'll be right back. Peter Biancamano back with you. Don't forget to watch us on cable access every Sunday and Monday at 9 a.m. Optimum Channel 18, Files Channel 46, and Comcast Channel 190. Also on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., you can watch our show on our YouTube channel, and you can also binge watch all of our old shows. Who doesn't want to keep watching The Postal Peter Bay? We'll see you there.
Welcome back to the Pulse with Peter B. Still here at the delicious Impostos Pizzeria located at 102 Washington Street. And a person that knows all about deliciousness is the person to my right. And that is our pro wrestling insider, Mr. Rob Tonneson. Rob, welcome back. That is uh, quite the intro. I'm very impressed with that. Thank exactly. you very much. You look like, you're like you, you like to eat, correct? Yes. <laughs> As he does the long pause there, I think I have upset him. Yeah. Now nah, you're good. All right, just making you're sure. Good. I tell you, another person I likes to eat. You know who that is? Um, I desperately want to make a Rangers joke, but nothing's come to mind right wow. now. Wow. I guess that's back, and that's our resident political analyst, Josh Schlotermeyer Einstein. He's good. He's a good guy right now. Oh, uh, really? All right. Well, good anyway, guy in my book. Rob, we are almost halfway through the year. Can you believe it? It's been weird. Where does the time go? 2024 is almost over. And today we are going to be talking about the WWE. Almost a mid-year report card for the WWE. A mid-year review. So, Rob, the last time you were on, you were discussing WrestleMania. And you actually attended WrestleMania XL in Philadelphia. Yeah. How was your experience? F uh, fun times. Uh, didn't actually do the the, the main show. Uh, the prices this year were a little bit ex uh, extreme, but did a lot of the stuff that were surrounded on it, uh, as you can see from the pictures that are uh, that are going on the screen right now. It was a fun time uh, doing a lot of the independent show, GCW's Collective, uh, Ring of Honor, Super Card, Super Card of Honor. It was a lot of fun. So would you say that WrestleMania XL, or 40, um, was... A high for the WWE so far this year. Oh, absolutely. The way that the story was told, as I've been on here for two years, telling you the story was ultimately for Cody to win. So when Cody does win, and we'll get to that later, um, it was almost the the end of the movie, so to speak, and how perfectly the Avengers ended with uh, with the Marvel Universe to kind of tie that all in together with Cena and The Rock and Taker and all the everybody that showed up. It was a wonderful to really enjoy. Interesting. Well, let's talk, uh, talk about another high for the WWE, another positive sign in the first six months of this year, and that is their overseas presence. You spoke about this at the end of last year, something to look forward to going forward, and you think it's been a success so far. I, I truly do. Uh, number one, as a fan of going to bed at a reasonable hour <laughs> when WWE shows are in Australia or in France or Clash at the Castle, which will already have happened by, by the time this airs, um, enjoying that nice early morning afternoon show. So it's done by five, six o'clock at night and you get to bed at a reasonable hour. It's wonderful. I loved Mania 40, but that going until midnight was a little bit much. And this is a cash cow for the WWE, correct? Oh, absolutely. And it, and it definitely is brand exposure, um, which is something that even though it is a worldwide brand, they have not explored what live events could look like televised from these areas. Uh, there's even reports in 2025, they might do something in Japan. Wow. My goodness. And and you want to talk about a lineage of professional wrestling. That's Japan, correct? Ex oh, exactly. Unbelievable. Let's talk about another positive that you sent me a little earlier today. And that's Sami Zayn. You're, you've always been a fan of Sami Zayn, though. So is this a little curved? You know, you you teach part-time. Excuse me, full-time, I should say. <laughs> um, is this a little bit of a, a Rob curve? Or is this a positive that everybody's enjoying? Well, it is it, it is June, so it is part-time now, let's be honest. <laughs> exactly. Um, I was so, <laughs> yes, I'm going to be totally biased. I love Sami Zayn. And I have always loved him when he was in, in the independence and, and all that. Um, but what... What Sami Zayn does that is really good is that believability aspect. Mm. So him beating Gunther and winning the way he did, it was just this, it was that nice story. And, and even, even now, um, one, of the, one of the amazing things I'll say is uh, Kevin Dunn being gone has done amazing jobs for the production of WWE. So his... Uh, show in Montreal, there was a beautiful one shot of Sammy just going through the crowd, and you just felt that emotion of like he finally got his due. 
Wow, unbelievable. Well, Rob, where there's highs, there's obviously lows for the WWE. They're not a perfect organization, I'm sure you. Oh, <laughs> far oh, away from that. That is correct? an entirely different. Why don't we show. start with the Wyatt Six buildup? Yes. Talk to me about what it is first. Obviously, Bray Wyatt unfortunately passed away uh, last year. I believe uh, it was? Yes, last year. Last year at an extremely young age with a heart condition, I believe it yes. was. Yes. If I'm not mistaken, what are they trying to revive here, and why isn't it working? Okay. Um. So. Bray Wyatt's brother, uh, Uncle Uncle Howdy, is his uh, WWE name now. He mm. was formerly Bo Dallas. Okay. So they are trying to revive what Bray was going to do uh, when he came back in January at last year's Royal Rumble. So it's going to be a combination of so many different people. So you're looking at Alexa Bliss, who was formerly involved with Bray, Bo Dallas, um, and then Nikki Cross and just all these kind of people to try to tie in kind of a supernatural vibe that if you want to say has been missing since Undertaker's retirement, fine. But wow. that's really kind of what they're doing. And we know what they're doing. It's just taking forever to get there. Okay. It's like, we know the end of the story. Get there already. Get there. Yeah. Like the buildup is, is boring, like you said. Right. So you mentioned him a little earlier, the new undisputed WWE champion, Cody Rhodes, of course, defeating Roman Reigns after that lengthy title reigns uh, from Roman Reigns. Why is, it, is he becoming so deflating now? You, you finished the story, you won the championship. How do you, how do you improve on it? Everybody loves Cody Rhodes' entrance. Um, everybody loves what Cody Rhodes is as that white meat baby face that uh, you want to root for. Mm. But now it's continuing and his match against AJ Styles in, uh, in France was great, but his match against Logan, Logan Paul was just okay. And going into a repeat match against AJ, it's kind of, yeah. and, and I, I feel see. like it's starting to, the air is starting to come out of the Cody balloon. And speaking of, yeah, was that what you said? Yeah. All right, good, just making sure. NXT generally, you put. Yes. So now this looks. This is kind of Triple H is, of course, is the chief operating officer still. Well, of the yes, WWE. Now, but now it's really shifted from. It shifted away from Triple H and has now become Shawn Michaels. What well, I was going to say, it was his baby. Yeah. You know, Shawn Michaels, great entertainer, great performer, but can he produce? Correct. And I guess the question is, not really. The thing about NXT is produce new talent. That is. Yeah. yeah. Well. The, the new talent they're getting is, is hit or miss. So you have, you have some great signings from Japan with the stardom promotion uh, coming over. So you're going to have a lot of um, female Japanese wrestlers coming in, which is going to be great for the product. But then with NXT, the negatives is you have people like the former Brian Pillman Jr. and Ethan Page who are not needle movers in, in, the, in the least. And pairing with Impact while fun because you have Jordan Grace coming in it's there's nobody in impact that could come into NXT and excite the product and with NXT just being it's it now it's obviously the developmental it was always meant to be for the main roster but now they're not making stars the way they used to very very interesting well Rob we have like 30 seconds left here talk to me about your two top matches in the WWE so far this 2024 year. I'll make it very, very quick for you. They were both on the same night, both available on Peacock. Seth uh, uh, Gunther versus Sami Zayn, Intercontinental Ch Championship match night two, and Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns night two. Just the way those stories ended. Well, get on Peacock. Really quickly, talk to me about your shirt. Uh, Willow Nightingale. We'll talk about her in the AEW episode. All right. And speaking of which, I love the segue. Rob will be back next week discussing the good, the bad, the ugly of all elite wrestling. Uh, thus far in 2024, so you're not going to want to miss that. We'll see you next week, my good friend, our pro wrestling insider, Rob Tonneson. Enjoy. All right, appreciate it again. All right, folks, join us next week for The Pulse on everything you need to know. I'm Peter Biancomano. I hope you have a great week, everybody.